I understand as a kind of Trump supporter that he isn't the greatest president in the world. But come on, let's be honest, he has done some good things. You know, this is, blimp represents Trump because it's full of hot air. OK, it's a big man child, an angry baby hanging above the skies. Now, yesterday, when Trump was hovering around the skies of London, he was busy tweeting outrageous things at our Lord, uh, at our Mayor Sadiq Khan. By the way, he got the largest number of votes in political history, and this is how you want to treat him? We say no, and that's why we're here. We know the President saw it because he said, uh, if this is what London's going to do, then I don't feel welcome here. And he's absolutely right, he's not welcome. He tweets ridiculous crap, all right? Like the Sadiq Khan thing, like, yesterday. Like, dude, really, is there any need for it? How do you feel about, um, for example, his attempt to ban Muslims from entering the country? Oh, I mean, Barack Obama did it with certain Muslim countries back in the day. Um, you know, he wasn't, like, banning all Muslim countries, you know? Um, he was banning certain countries that have high terrorist levels. Somalia, Iran, uh, Iraq, Syria, you know, these are countries that obviously are, like, quite water on the moment. We do not want to welcome someone who is openly misogynistic, speaks out against the rights of LGBT communities, fuels um, the, the flames of Islamophobia, is, is um, giving rise to the, the increase of the far right. You don't have to like Sadiq Khan, you don't have to like his policies, you may think he's a rubbish mayor, but you should be outraged by the way he's being treated. And uh, Trump definitely has gone on record to uh, abuse him because of his um, Muslim identity and because of his race. So he hasn't banned all Muslim countries. He hasn't banned Saudi Arabia, he hasn't banned Qatar. He hasn't banned, um, you know, places like uh, Abu Dhabi and places like the UAE. He hasn't banned people like that. I'm not criticising the fact that he has an opinion. I'm criticising his opinion. Um, I think that it's, you know, it's, it's not... Everybody's entitled to that, and as a world leader, it, you know, he's entitled to kind of say what he thinks about what we should be doing, but what he does say tells us a lot about the kind of politics that he stands for. And that just shows us what kind of trade agreement we would, we would be having with the US. He has done some good things. You've got to come with me some, on some common ground there, OK? Prison reform, OK? Uh, you know, he's put more minorities to work in the United States than ever before, than any other president in history. The economy is on the boom, OK? And he's putting, you know, tens of thousands of people back to work. This is what I'm trying to get across to people. Owen Jones, the leader of the free world, is visiting our country. We should be showing him a little bit of respect, shouldn't we? <laughs> we should show absolutely no respect to a man who speaks about women in the most degrading way possible. And there's misogyny grabbing them by the genitals. We should show no respect to a man who bans trans soldiers from serving in the US military and wants to define them out of existence. We should show no respect to a man who wanted to ban Muslims from the United States entering and went as far as he could to make that happen. We should show no respect to a man who demonizes migrants, not least from Mexico. We should no respect to a man who is destroying this planet through the climate emergency he's fueling, taking the biggest polluter in the history of human existence out of the Paris Agreement. He shows no respect for the basic principles of humanity. So why should we show a respect to a man who represents nothing but bigotry and racism and hatred? And that, I think, is a basic principled point. This idea of decorum and respect and social norms, those that respect is earned. And a man who treats humanity in the way that Donald Trump treats humanity deserves not an iota of respect. I think what we should be doing is respecting the American people, and that's what we do. We respect the office of the presidency, but what we have is an incumbent in the White House is acting in a way that I think just inflames opinion right across the world. The treatment of migrants, the fact that young children were locked up in America last year without their parents, the fact that perhaps the biggest challenge that we face around the world of climate change, that Donald Trump has turned his back on working collectively with others. It is unfortunate to say the least that the Prime Minister has ruled out, rolled out the red carpet for Donald Trump. It was the wrong thing to do. Of course, he's now grandstanding. He has the audience with the Queen. The Prime Minister ought to be ashamed of herself. This is not about turning against America. It's not about turning against the American people. They are our friends and we want to work with 
liberals in North America to make sure that we have a safe landing place, that we tackle climate change, that we tackle the right-wing populism, and I'm glad that people have come out tonight to protest against the official visit, the state visit of the President of the US. What, what parallels are there in the UK's politics between uh, those of the American President? But I think there is a dangerous trend towards right-wing populism right across the world. I guess the issue of migration is the important one. And I'm quite appalled by the language that we often hear from those that want to turn the UK into an insular place. Quite frankly, we are enriched by migration, economically, socially and culturally. And those of us that believe in those liberal values have got a responsibility to stand up and speak out for them. We're in the minority because all, all the snowflakes have come out. We need to stand up for democracy. 17.4 million is not the mini minority. America is our strongest ally. Uh, they helped us win the war. Um, we will be doing trade deals with them when we leave the EU. And I think he should have a little bit of respect. Speaks the truth. Right? And most, most women you know, Trump, Trump did say, yeah, you know, uh, about their pussy grabbing. But, you know, men's done that over, over the years. When I went to school, we, we, people used to say that. You know, used to, used to, I used to hear women say, I'll grab men's uh, uh, privates. Right? It's all part of growing up. He's, you know, he's, 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 he's still a kid at heart. I'm still a kid. Right? You know, what's wrong in not growing up? Yeah, it may be, it may seem unusual that um, I'm out here as a woman, but there is a lot of women who are for Trump. Um, we don't believe the lies because he talked about a pussy 20 years ago. Who gives a shit? We have no hope but for him. Ultimately, we have hope in God. But these lot don't believe in God, they just believe in beating people up. If, if somebody made something like that of the Queen and flew that on the Queen's visit, we'd be appalled. We would be absolutely appalled. So, yeah, we've come here today to support him. What has he done to all these people? What has he actually done to them? Just because they don't like his politics, that gives them the right to come out and, and slate him and shout about him and blow balloons up. Not, not in my world it doesn't. I think we should give him some respect. They want a second referendum. Them. They want democracy. We have we we implemented our votes, but it hasn't taken place. I see a link between Brexit and Donald Trump and globalism, stopping globalism. I don't like the fact that we're you know this globalism. I'm dead against that. I'm dead against uh, an unelected bureaucrats up in Brussels I mean, right, who, who you cannot vote out and they're, and they're forcing laws upon us that we don't even know about. I have no problem with Europe. It's, it's the EU. Right? And, and there's one thing right, through history if you get any country that has a proper democracy they will never, they've never ever gone to war against one another. You know that? Do, do, do you know that young lady? And any country that's had a democracy, they've never gone to war against one another. Do you think never. So that tells you, right, we want a democracy. We don't want a dictatorship. That woman, a lefty, went and hit my friend oh, no, my with her stick. Yeah, with her really stick. She ran over, bang, and hit her. Yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, no one gives a shit, you see. And you're listening to that officer. Sorry, unfortunately, no one gives a shit. We give a shit when you go around assaulting people. Donald Trump is here to save us, save the world. From people like you. Look at him, that one there, too. Nuts. My message to people protesting here is that they are the future. They are both the resistance, but they're also representing the values of the future. You know, Britain is an open, compassionate, welcoming country. It is not the country that Donald Trump wants it to be, or Nigel Farage or Boris Johnson. So I think those values are so important. We're saying to President Trump that he doesn't speak for Britain. He doesn't share values with Britain. He is a climate denier. He is a misogynist, a bigot and a bully. I think it's absolutely right that we say he is not welcome in this country. You say Britain's a welcoming country, but you don't extend that same courtesy to the American president? Well, I would be certainly happy to welcome him for a meeting, a working meeting. I think there's a difference between that and rolling out the red carpet. Let's not forget that only, I think, two US presidents in this Queen's reign have actually been granted the, the privilege, if you like, of that state visit. And I think we should be extending state visits to those with whom we share values and I think any cursory examination of 
President Trump suggests that he is not one of those. How significant is the symbolism of Trump meeting with the Queen, that handshake yesterday, for example? I think it's deeply significant. I don't think that we should be pimping out the royal family just to get photo opportunities for Donald Trump. He's made it very clear that that's all he's interested in. He wants to photograph because that will help his re-election back in the US. I don't think we should be conniving in that. I think Britain is better than that. So by all means, meet him and have working meetings. But the idea that this is a man whose values we share, I think is completely wrong. How much is your opposition against the president himself and how much is it against the wider Trumpism ideology? I think in a way it's harder to, to, to divide them, but certainly Trumpism as an ideology is enormously dangerous. So why we, while we object to the president because his particular misogynistic racist tendencies, we, we absolutely oppose the ideology of, of Trumpism and nowhere more so than when you see what that means for climate change. The greatest threat that we face, he brings the US out of the most important multilateral set of negotiations to tackle the climate crisis. On things like nuclear weapons, he's undermining the, uh, the, 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 the negotiations with Iran on that. So he's a dangerous man, let's be mo not under no impression about that.